Hi, Joe Peprocki from Loyola Press for Papa Prayer. And today our guest is David O'Brien, who is the Regional Director of Project Lift, a nonprofit organization that helps at risk young people struggling with mental health and substance abuse issues. Hi, Dave, and thanks for being with us today. Thanks, Joe. I appreciate the invitation. Well, let's jump right into talking about prayer. You want to talk about helping others teach others how to pray. So when it comes to forming people in faith, where does teaching prayer fit in? Well, I'd just like to say to start off, I spent 30 years working inside parishes and for the diocesan offices and university campus ministries. So I did a lot of this before I went into nonprofit work. And really what I found was no matter how brilliant the program was or how inspiring the speaker was, that people just don't really remember 90% of what they hear. But when we taught them how to pray, when we took the time to really make prayer the focus, it opened up the space for them to encounter the Lord, which of course they remembered because that's transformational. But also it set them up for a lifetime of knowing how to pray. I find that so many people, they... They want to pray, they, they desire to have a communication open with God, they just don't know where to start. They don't know what is entailed in praying. Yeah, and I, I think I have found that too often we approach prayer as so uh, it'd be nice if we get to it. And then you're right. saying it needs, needs to be front and center. So for someone who's involved in faith formation, whether it's children or adults, what can he or she do to help people develop a life of prayer? Right. So what I found that over the years, I hear people say things like, you know, put a little altar in the uh, room where you are. And I think that's good advice. But what I often found is that people would take that advice, they build a little sacred space, and they never use it. Then they go into the lesson plan, and they just launch, you know, today, we're going to talk about the creed. And today, we're going to talk about the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. But they wouldn't pray with the people in the room. And so what I would recommend is that no matter how much time you have, and no matter what your curriculum tells you you have to get done, block off the last 10 minutes and pray with them. Make it an absolute priority that you pray with them. Because again, they are not going to remember, they might not even remember all seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, but they will remember what you taught them as a life skill. It's kind of like you teach your young people how to use a credit card, and then they're gonna use it the rest of their life. Whereas how many times are you going to talk about seven gifts of the Holy Spirit? You, you, it, if we get deep into it, yes, we would spend some time with it. But you could pray every day, lots of times a day, and it's more of a life skill than it is sort of like an add-on. So it has to be built into the structure of whatever your lesson plan is or your curriculum is. Prayer, stop everything else, do the prayer. Yeah, we have to remember that prayer is part of the curriculum. It's one of the four pillars of the catechism, and, and we should remember that. So in closing then, Dave, what uh, practical steps can someone take when praying with others, especially if they themselves don't have a whole lot of expertise when it comes to a life of prayer? So here's what I would recommend is that uh, there's two components that I would build into everything that you do. If you want to do something that you can repeat, every time you gather. So let's say you have a whole entire year with religious education or your RCIA program, do the same type of structure, light a candle, uh, get in a circle, whatever it is, you decide, okay? But then maybe start with a particular prayer or a song or a short, you know, a short verse, whatever it might be, then open the floor for people to kind of pray whatever it is that they wanna pray, okay? Allow them to share um, the things that are on their heart. And what I usually do is I try to help people to not say like petitions, we, you know, we pray for peace in the world. No, we're talking to Jesus. Jesus, I just want to ask you, Jesus, Lord, I just want to ask you for my grandmother. She's sick. Talk to the Lord. Everybody should learn how to just talk to God and then close uh, or come to the end of it with some type of prayer from the tradition. Introduce things that are good for them to know. So maybe you'll do a Hail Mary at the end for several months, and maybe then you'll do a Divine Mercy Chaplet because it takes about seven minutes, you know? Um, you can do different things so that they learn about the tradition. They learn about the richness of the different prayers. It can even be just a quote from a saint about prayer. 
so that they get exposure, but don't take away that personal aspect of it. And we're a church of liturgy, repetition and ritual. Just keep doing the same thing week in and week out. And it gives people a rhythm. It helps them to kind of slide into it. They know what to expect. They know what's coming. And sometimes they'll come ready with different things that they want to pray for. So we learn by doing. It's great advice, Dave. And uh, I can't thank you enough for spending time with us uh, today and helping others to learn about how to help others to pray. Well, thanks for having me. And I really appreciate it. And thank all of you for being with us today. My name is Joe Paprocki from Loyola Press for Papa Prayer. Until next time, God bless.